Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing number two from the 2024 Calc BC exam. It's like the uh, parametric equation. So let's let's look at this. Uh, a particle moving along a curve in the xy plane has position x of t, y of t at t seconds. X of t and y of t are measured in centimeters. Oh, I don't know if I'm supposed to use units on this, maybe. Uh, it is known that x prime of t is 8t minus t squared. Y prime of t is negative t plus the square root of t square root of t to the 1.2 plus 20. I found that hard to read. At time t equals two seconds, the particle is at uh, the point 0.36. Find the speed of the particle at the time t equals two seconds. Show the setup for your calculations. So no, it doesn't ask for the units on this, so we do not need to put units. Um, so, but it would be centimeters per second if it said like include units. Uh, anyway, uh, it's gonna be the square root of x prime of 2 squared plus y prime of 2 squared. So when you're doing this, you want to memorize how to find um, speed, distance traveled, uh, acceleration, velocity vectors. There's like a lot of things that you kind of need, um, but speed is definitely one of them. It's the magnitude of the velocity vector, and the velocity vector is x prime comma y prime. So here we go. Uh, calculator. I just stored the functions, and then after I stored the functions, I had it calculate this. So we'll say approximately... 12.305, and again, if we needed units, it would be centimeters per second. Doesn't ask for that though. Um, find the total distance traveled by the particle over the time interval, so that's gonna be arc length. So we're doing distance is going to be the integral from zero to two of the square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared. So you wanna be careful, just don't accidentally plug in the two from the previous problem here especially on your calculator if you're just like copying and pasting expressions. Um, so we have this. So that is the integral of speed, and speed is the magnitude of velocity. So that's what we're doing here for total distance traveled. Um, here's your calculator page. Integral from 0 to 2. So we get a scary warning that says uh, results obtained using approximate arithmetic. Nothing we can do about that. So we just accept the answer, write it down. Three decimal places, 15.902. And we move on to the next thing. So this would have been in centimeters if I had used units on this, which maybe I was supposed to. It doesn't ask for them, so I don't think so. Uh, next up. So find the y coordinate of the position of the particle at time t equals zero. Show the setup for your calculations. All right, so you gotta be really careful with this because the thing that you are given is position at t equals two. We know at t equals two, the particle is at three, six. The y coordinate is six. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that y of zero is where we are at two, and then minus the displacement from zero to two of, you know, the y coordinate. So it's minus the integral from zero to two of y prime of t dt. It's my favorite way to rearrange the fundamental theorem. If you're not sure what's happening there, just think like the integral from zero to two of y prime should be y of two minus y of zero. Rearrange it so that you're solving for y of zero. I'm going to jump on the calculator for this. Um, so y of zero is, nope, y of two was six minus the integral from zero to two of, I always store my functions derivatives as d, whatever the name of the function is, so dy of t in this case. Um, and I got negative 1.174. So y of zero is approximately negative 1.174. All right, let's take a look at the next part, which is like kind of wordy. Oh no, it's not, I thought it was. Part d, um, for t, for two less than or equal to t, less than or equal to eight. The particle remains in the first quadrant. Okay, so I think that's important. We want to find all times t uh, between 2 and 8 when the particle is moving toward the x-axis, and we need to give a reason. So what I'm going to do is, like, think this out, right? If you're in the first quadrant, you know that y is greater than 0. You want to be moving toward the x-axis, which is moving down. To move down, you need dy dt, or y prime, to be less than 0. So we're just looking for where y prime is less than 0. I'm going to let the calculator do the work on this. Um, so I just graphed y prime, uh, make sure, so I graphed dy of x. So you have to make sure that you're using x there as your variable or nothing will happen. I also graphed zero, found the intersection. I can see that um, y prime is negative between 5.222 uh, and eight. So I'm gonna say that y prime of t is less than zero, 5.222, less than t, less than or equal to eight, definitely negative at eight. So I'm gonna include that because it's included. Um, but then we need to give like a reason. So I said the particle is moving toward the x-axis on that interval. And my reason is I included that y was greater than zero because it is relevant. y of t is greater than zero. 
y prime of t is less than zero on that interval. That'll move you toward the x-axis. Because if you just think about it, if y was negative and y prime was negative, you'd be moving away from the x-axis. So I think it's important to include. We'll see when the scoring guidelines come out if they thought it was important to include. I think they probably will, but who knows. All right, uh, that's the entire problem. I hope this was helpful, and good luck.